and welcome. My name is James Hall and I'm a solutions architect at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Today we're going to talk a little bit about NVMe technology and we're also going to look at how we're applying NVMe and storage class memory and NVMe memory into our storage portfolio in order to help drive application performance for customers, reduce wait times and deliver better application user experiences. So very quickly, let's talk about NVMe because there's a lot of confusion around that. So NVMe is not a media type. NVMe is a protocol that replaces SCSI. SCSI has been around for a long time. It was designed to work with spinning drives. And now, as you can see, in the world we live in, we're moving towards SSD drives for all of our workloads. And therefore, NVMe is a new protocol in order to move data around in a much quicker time frame. So very quickly on the media types. So today we have SAS SSDs. And if we look at the cost of those, um, they're relatively cost effective. We also have NVMe SSDs, which have a slightly higher cost. And then we have storage class memory. And to give you an example of that, that's currently the highest cost that we have today from a memory technology point of view. So if we think about these, today largely we're shipping SAS SSDs. And if we look at my stack over here, we can see that I've got my application server or my host. Uh, it's connected to a fiber channel network or it could be an IP network. And that's then connected to my storage controllers, which is in this instance using SAS SSD drives, for example. So if we think about how we can improve performance, there's two things we can do. We can drive more IOPS or more throughput. But more importantly, we can deliver lower latency. And it's latency which makes applications go faster. And it's lower latencies which makes the user experience for using that application better. So if I look about my storage platform here and I think, OK, if I was to put now NVMe drives in here, and I would ultimately reduce the latency at the back end and increase my capability to do more IOPS. But within that, I'm only impacting the latency in this area here. So I may go from a millisecond to half a millisecond, which is fantastic because it means I can do potentially twice as many IOPS. It also means that my application server is getting its data faster. But what I'm not doing is I'm not addressing any of this space here. So if I think about where the latency lies, you know, in a storage system, if it's half a millisecond here, the rest of my latency could be in this section, or it also could be because I'm replicating data. So let's go back to this side of the room. We think about the costs. So if I'm going to spend a significant amount of money, so I'm going to use my NVMe resources and put them as an entire tier of storage in here, I address only a very, very small uh, element of my stack. So you know, I have to get the block from my host into the storage RAM, I have to get my acknowledgement back, or I have to get my read back across the wire. So over here, and if I go back to my cost side, I'm spending more than I would have done on my SAS SSDs to have a faster tier of media in my storage array but I'm not addressing the overall stack over here. So can we do NVMe from host to storage? Of course we can, but today we have a limited number of operating systems that are supporting native NVMe from a host perspective, and also a limited number of fiber channel switches and IP switches where we are supporting NVMe. So then we start to look at, okay, do I want to spend a significant amount of money to get only a benefit in one element of my stack, is one question, or can I do something different in order to accelerate my application workload where I don't have to put an entire tier of storage in which isn't going to address the overall stack for me. So how do we look at that? So if we look at my other drawing here, again, it's a simplified version. So I have my host. He's connected to a switch. And again, I've used fiber channel, but it could be IP. Now down in this area, I have my SAS SSDs. So I'm using the cost effective uh, media because today the performance is good and the latency is good. And then I look to say, OK, how can I make the back end do less IOPS but accelerate application reads at the front end? So we look to do some caching. So in here, I can use my storage class memory. And now I can use it as an advanced read cache. So the system is looking at what blocks are being required very, very frequently. And we move that from the back end. And we move that onto the controller node itself, where it can be accessed extremely quickly over NVMe with a storage class memory device which has blisteringly low latency. And I only need a small resource. So if we think about application workloads, you know, 20% of the data is doing largely all of the work. So if I can start to cache those reads into the controller node, I'm now addressing the latency. So I'm delivering the latency, a much faster latency, as I described up here using these devices. But now I'm only doing it with a very, very small resource. I haven't had to buy an entire array full of NVMe resources. I'm literally adding my storage class memory. And the reason why I want to add a little bit is because of this. It is costly. It's costly. So now I want to get the most amount of use of it. So what benefit do we get from that? So from an Oracle perspective, and we're caching reads into this storage tier, we can see around about a 37% reduction in Oracle wait times. What does that mean? 
It means that your CPU cores are not having to wait for your storage to, res to, to respond. So, and here's a bold statement, if I remove 40% of my cores, what impact does that have on my Oracle licensing? A very positive one. More importantly though, um, from a user perspective, we're seeing a 20% enhancement to the user's experience on that application. It means that they are able to be more productive and work faster. And this is not just for Oracle, this would be for any potential workload, typically structured, could gain the benefits of using this technology. So if, let's look at the summary. So I have a new protocol to move blocks around. Today we can do it in the storage array, and yes we can do it from host across the fabric to the array, but it's limited in what we support. I've got three drive technologies, or three memory technologies. So I've got my SAS, which is the most cost effective today, I've got my NVMe, SSD drives, and I've got my storage class memory drives. And if we think about from a performance point of view, the performance goes up as we come down these media types, and the latency goes down, but the cost goes up. So in our world, we want to take the fastest memory technology, and we want to implement it in a simplified manner in a system that requires no administrational overhead, no operational overhead, and we want to get our best bang for bucks. We want these cards or these drives full of data because we're spending a bit of money on them and the net result from there is is I don't have to change anything here and if I haven't got the support from an operating system perspective here I can still get the benefit of this technology and I can reduce application wait times which might have a positive impact on my licensing and I can also improve my end user experience and make them more productive in their work. So this is how HPE storage is helping organizations by speeding up application workloads in the most cost-effective manner using the latest technology and the latest protocols. Thank you, my name's James. I hope you found the session valuable. For more information, visit hpe.com forward slash storage.